Okay, guys, so somebody asked, how do you use Logic to make jazz backing to play along with, to practice or to do gigs in a venue or something like that over a backing track? Well, you could program it yourself, but the best thing to do is just find MIDI files of those jazz standards and load them into Logic. Let me show you how to do one. I've got Logic here. I do File open go to my downloads where i've downloaded a midi file of dave brubeck's take five there it is take five one mid open it there'll be a little bit of hoop, 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 and then it will open there it is so there's the drum track there's the upright bass piano and saxophone these little things here don't worry about those right now Let's have a listen. When you load up a MIDI file, Logic always puts the SoCal kit on the drum track. Okay, and, and the drums, you know, this SoCal kit is okay, but it's got no brushes. So let's switch it. Okay, so I select the track. Here's its channel. And there's the drum kit. Look, if I click on that, I open the drum kit. So instead of the drum kit, let's switch that instrument to the EXS sampler multi out. Boom, like that. Okay. Now it'll still say SoCal kit because when we open the XR EXS sampler, it's still got the SoCal kit loaded in it. Now we're going to go here, and to do this, you need all the logic content downloaded, including the legacy content, right? Select here to change the sample set and choose drums and percussion, acoustic drum kits, whoop, acoustic drum kits. There's a jazz kit, but there's also a studio brush kit. I'm going to go with that one. Select it, boom. And now we've loaded the studio brush kit. Let's have a listen now. Yeah, that's a bit more jazzy, right? But the only thing is, all the drums. Let's, um, let's switch now to the mixer. Open it up to wider channels like that by clicking that icon. So there's the drum track selected and it selects the channel for the drum track in the mixer. And at the top there's the EXS sampler. Now look down the channel because I put on here an EXS multi out sampler at the bottom of that channel for the EXS drum track for the sampler right there's a little plus and minus button click the plus once twice and we've created two extra outputs okay this first original channel for the drum track with the excess sampler on it is output one two the main output we've created additional outputs three and four and five and six now go back to the main channel open the excess sampler and click edit here edit that opens this up now choose the bass drum at the top hold down shift and choose the next bass drum so i've chosen these two bass drum samples zones right there's all the samples there in those two bass drum zones click the first one hold down shift click the last one and then switch their output here they're all set to main which is output one two Switch them to output three, four. We're going to put all the kick drums on the next pair of outs, three and four. Boom, they're all changed to output three, four. Now go down the list here and look for the next bass drum. There it is, bass drum. Hold down shift, select the next one as well. So they're both selected. There's all the samples in those two bass drum zones. Click on the top sample, hold down shift, select the bottom sample and switch all those to output three and four. Now all of our kick drums are set to output three and four. Okay, now choose the first snare there, snare drum. Select the first sample, hold down shift, select the last sample, and switch that to output five, six. Then there's a snare drum, hold down shift, that snare drum, hold down shift, and that snare drum, all three selected and highlighted. There's all the samples in those three snare drum zones. 
select the first sample, hold down shift, select the last sample and switch all those to output 5 and 6. Now finally this last snare drum here, select it, choose the first sample, hold down shift, choose the last sample and switch all those to output 5, 6. Now all my bass drums are output, set to output 3 and 4 now and all my snares are set to output 5 and 6. All the snare and bass drum zones that is, right? Now close this edit with the red thing there. Boom. Save. That will save the brush kit as separate outs with those drums on the separate outs. Okay, so now what we've got, if you look here, the snare is now an output 5 6 there, right? And the bass drum is on output 3 4. The rest of the kit is on the main output 1 2. Okay, so now let's get the kick drum track here and put a compressor on it. And then we'll just turn the threshold down till we get a little bit of needle movement there. Let's solo the kick drum. We can label this. Whoop, we can label this kick. And we can label this one snare. Okay, so we're listening to the kick drum now, it's soloed. Okay, so I just I turn this down until I get some movement in the needle. And then bring this up to adjust my volume level. Because the thing is this, this is the main output for the drums. If I turn them down, that's all the cymbals and toms and everything on this main output. If I turn them down, as soon as I hit play, it will jump back up again. Watch. Right? That's because the volume level for the drums is set in this MIDI pattern. So if I turn it down, it will just turn back up again every time. So I have to adjust my kick and snare to the rest of the kit on the final out. This main stereo out there. So there's my kick. I've got a compressor on it now. If I need to adjust the kick drum level, I can do it with this makeup gain here. Then there's the snare channel. I put a compressor on that as well. And again, let's solo it. Solo the snare drum channel. And again, I'll turn the threshold down. Until I start getting some needle movement. And now I can adjust the output for the snare with this output on the... Uh, or makeup gain, as it's called, on the compressor. Right, so let's listen now. Let's have the whole kit soloed. Main out. Kick out and snare out. We'll listen to the whole kit now. Okay, so now to adjust the level, I open the compressor snare, the compressor on the snare there, and adjust the level of the snare here. Then here is the kick drum. I open the compressor on the kick drum out and adjust the kick drum relative to the rest of the kit. There we go, and now it's my drums balanced. Let's have a listen. Something still soloed, these two. Okay, now again, I cut, there's the piano channel there, right, for the piano track. I can't turn it down because as soon as I hit play, it'll jump back up. Because in this piano MIDI region, the volume is set, so it jumps to that level whenever it plays. So to adjust the level of the piano, I'll take that tape delay off, I'll open the compressor on that channel, and I can turn the piano down here. Let me mute the sax, let's get the bass now, there's the bass again. Let's take that tape delay off, I don't know why there's a tape delay on there. Again, if I adjust the level of the bass, it jumps back up as soon as we hit play, because again, in this MIDI file on the bass track, the volume level is set. So no matter what you set it to, it'll jump back up as soon as you hit play. So again, to adjust the level of the bass, I open the compressor and adjust the level of the bass here. Let's get some compression going on it. I turn the threshold down until the needle starts to move on the bass. Let's solo it. There we go. Now I can adjust the level here for the bass. Let's take it out of solo. OK, 
okay back to the piano that's a little bit loud still open the compressor turn it down a bit okay and then there's finally the saxophone now the sax there's the sax track here's its channel open the excess sampler it's playing the alto sax it doesn't sound that bad let's have a listen to it again But I, I think there's a better sax, which is here we go. Pop horns, soprano sax. Now it won't sound high up in soprano. Listen. That is more of a soprano y sound, but it's in the same. I think it just sounds much nicer. Um, and if you don't like the octave of it. Right, there's the track selected. Look, it's. Um, I take this region, that's the region on the sax track. Look, let's just zoom out. So that's the region for the sax. And here, transpose. I could transpose it down an octave. But that doesn't sound right. Put it back to octave. Zero. Transpose zero. If you want it higher, transpose it up an octave. too high right let's bring it down an octave to zero so no transpose right but it's a nicer sax it's a bit more real now here's the channel for the sax track it's selected on the channel after the EQ it's a bit loud to start with isn't it for the rest of it and again if I lower the level it jumps straight back up so we need to lower the output of that sack so let's put a compressor on there and we'll use this to lower it and then finally let's have a bit of reverb on that so on there's again this is the soprano sax channel the, the sax channel after the eq and the compressor i'm going to put another plug in I'm going to put a reverb space designer on there just out of the box I'm not going to choose a preset just the preset it opens with and I can adjust the reverb amount here with this slider Bass is a bit loud, choose the bass track, here's its channel selected, open the compressor, just turn that down a bit. Go back to the kit channel here. There's the kit, the kit, right? And there's the separate out for the kick, the separate out for the snare. I'm going to go back to the main channel here, open the EQ, and I'm just going to put some high shelf to boost the cymbals. Yeah, just a bit nicer, a bit brighter the cymbals, right? There you go. Here's the snare channel, separate out for the snare. I'm going to put an EQ on that and brighten the snare up as well. It's a bit dull. Bring that down. Nice, bright, fizzy snare. Just bring the level down a bit. This is the compressor on the snare channel. Just down a smidge. There you go. That's how you do that.
again, obviously, if you were going to take this out and play guitar or sax over it, you would mute the sax and then bounce this off as an audio file. If I'm going to play that lead instead of on the sax, I'm going to play it on a guitar or on a sax, I don't want it in the mix. I only want the piano, the double bass um, and the drum kit playing. And then I'll play the sax or, or guitar playing the lead. So just mute the lead instrument if that's what you're playing over the top. Then go to your master output channel here, stereo out and click bounce and bounce it off as a WAV file or as an MP3 or both. So you've got a, a WAV version or AIF and an MP3 version. Right? And then you put that in your audio player at the gig, hit play and uh, play along with it. Okay, there you go. That's how you do that.